All right, gang, let's talk about the causes of leaky gut syndrome. This could easily be a 30 minute video if I wanted it to be, but I'm gonna to try to keep it concise and to the point so it's as helpful as possible. First and foremost, food can induce leaky gut syndrome. If you are eating something that you are reactive to and it's creating inflammation in your body, whether that be processed food, fast food, sugar, gluten, dairy, whatever the case may be for you, since food is one of the primary ways that your microbiome and your gut lining sees the world and you're putting it in your body most every day of your life, that's gonna be one of the main drivers of leaky gut syndrome for an awful lot of people. Similarly, medications, especially medications that you're swallowing orally, have a very high likelihood of causing leaky gut. Specifically, some of the ones that are really well researched are corticosteroids. So this would be like anti-inflammatory drugs that oftentimes people will be put on for autoimmune conditions or really severe inflammatory conditions like prednisone. Uh, acid blocking medications like PPIs. For those of you who are familiar with my SIBO videos, you will know plenty about PPIs and how I disdain that class of drugs but suppressing stomach acid and messing with the microbiome will cause leaky gut syndrome for an awful lot of people. And then, as I mentioned in another video, antibiotics. If you kill some of the good gut flora to a point where you allow bad flora to thrive or bad yeast to thrive, that in, if, of itself will cause leaky gut. Similarly, parasites. If you're out and about, if you drink some river water and you pick up Giardia, you could bet your bottom dollar you're gonna get leaky gut syndrome from that pathogen and that parasite too. Similarly, one that gets overlooked an awful lot is actually hormones. And if you think about it, as a woman, I would have more of an abundance of estrogen and progesterone, and that would be really important for the female body. And it also is very important for women to heal their gut lining to have adequate normal amounts of estrogen and progesterone. Similarly for men, you're gonna be hard pressed to heal your leaky gut if you don't have enough testosterone. And it's probably less dependent on the, the so-called female hormones in that regard for men. So whatever your sex hormones may be, depending on your gender, that's something to keep an eye out for. Also thyroid hormones. And this is another catch-22 where if you're hypothyroid, you're also gonna have sluggish motility, more of a propensity towards developing like IBS with constipation or SIBO, but also you need thyroid hormone to heal the gut lining. So you could take all the glutamine, all the zinc carnosine in the world, but if you're hypothyroid, you're not gonna heal jack squat. There's another hormone that I think often gets overlooked, which is insulin. If you're getting insulin surges and you're living this roller coaster of eating sugar and carbs and then like doing keto for a week and then eating sugar and carbs and then doing Weight Watchers for a week, or even if you're just having sugar all day, every day, that is going to cause major amounts of inflammation for your body, and then you're gonna be hard pressed to heal anything, let alone your gut lining. Another big foundational one that doesn't get talked about is iron deficiency slash anemia of any variety. All of the cells in your entire body really, really like iron and really, really like oxygen, the thing that you're carrying around, the whole purpose of making hemoglobin and red blood cells. If you can't get oxygen to the tissues to heal your tissues, you're not gonna heal them, and that includes the gut. One that's really near and dear to my heart in this rapid fire list is actually concussions and brain injury. The gut brain connection, everybody is talking about in the sense that if you heal your gut, you will do things that are anti-inflammatory and healing for the brain. But what doesn't always get talked about is that if you do something to your brain, like a concussion or a brain injury, a stroke, or a neurodegenerative diseases like dementia, that will induce leaky blood brain barrier. And then that, actually induces leaky gut syndrome. And that I think actually is what set me on a lot of my road to autoimmunity and squirrely gut problems because I had a bad concussion in college. So head injury is another one to keep in mind and making sure that your brain is as healthy and de-inflamed as possible. And then finally, we are alive in this day and age and the brilliance of humanity is that we've made all of these man-made chemicals that are so toxic and horrible for the human body. And now we have research that shows things like bisphenols, like BPA, in water bottles causes leaky gut syndrome. Mercury, aluminum is a pretty hot topic right now. I hypothesize that even things like phthalates, parabens, and PCBs and other toxic substances will also cause leaky gut syndrome in the right amount for the right people. So basically anything that could be inflammatory for your body will probably flame out your gut and cause leaky gut syndrome. But that was about as concise of a list as I could cram into this video.